three, two, one. Hi, welcome to another exciting edition of Color Me Poetry this, uh, today. And I'm so excited to have this young lady with us because I've admired her work. And uh, she's a great poet in the person of Miss Cayenne. Like Cayenne Pepper, she's a hot sister. She's so beautiful. And we, we, we're glad to have you here on Color Me Poetry. Thank uh, you. And you are a poet. And I know it. Yeah, I'm glad. Everybody's going to know it before the show's over. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's, I've heard so much about you. All of my other poetry friends in the DMV, mm -hmm. they speak highly of you. I've known of you before I met you, so oh, that's, wow. that speaks volumes about what you're doing in the community as well. Yeah. So. Now, we met down in um, down in Huntington. We have. I think we met. AKA Obui. Obui, right. <laughs> yeah. He's been educating, you've been educating yeah. me on the DMV, all the little spots. And yeah, we yes. did meet down mm -hmm. there as well. That was awesome. It was yeah. awesome time. Now, Ms. Cayenne, how long have you been, you been writing? And did poetry choose you, or did you choose poetry? Huh. I don't think I've ever had it asked me that way. I mm -hmm. think that um, poetry, I think we've chose each other at different uh, points in our lives. Really? And, and initially, um, it was just an assignment. Some, you know, a teacher said, write something, you know. Really? So that's what it, how it initially. How old were you? Probably um, seven. Ooh, seven. seven years wow. old. So my first published piece was around seven years old. Mm -hmm. I used to live in the Midwest, and uh, at that time, uh, the school systems really reiterated the arts. So mm -hmm. they infuse artistic expression in every subject matter. So I think science class, it didn't matter. It didn't have to be English class. So I mm -hmm. remember the teacher saying to write something, um, uh, something about mm -hmm. whatever you felt and so I wrote these five or six lines and she submitted wow. that to a citywide magazine and that was my first published piece. Wow yeah, yeah. I've been writing since I was about six. Okay. Um, but I didn't I mean I didn't think of it as poetry you know my grandma right. would always read my stuff she said what's wrong with the boy? <laughs> but I didn't I didn't think of myself as a poet um, but that's, they told me that's what I was doing. Wow. So, it, you know, it's just been a part of my life. Yeah. yeah. So, I guess mm -hmm. poetry chose you. Well, yeah, it must have chosen me because at, at seven, I wasn't trying to choose it. <laughs> <You> <laughs> right, know? right. I'm trying to go outside and but play. But, you know, I always say that creativity, no matter what kind of creativity it is, uh, creativity seems to have a mind of its own. Yeah. You know? I would agree. Yeah. It, it seems to, um, I know for me, creativity is my, it's like oxygen for me, and if mm -hmm. I don't have an outlet for it, if you I'm can't not, breathe. I can't breathe. I'm not the wow. same person. I'm not wow. the same person. So it it does have a mind of its own. It gives me life. You That's know? interesting because you, I've see, I've heard you share your work before, and it is breathless and oh, breathtaking. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate yeah, so, that. So uh, what what is it that you know, do you write about anything in particular or? Just whatever comes to mind. So I I write about I think a lot of my work that I share publicly is probably mm -hmm. either uh, spiritual mm -hmm. um, or provoking in that I may be talking about a a challenge in our society or something like that. But a lot of my work is encouraging that I share publicly. A lot of the work is encouraging, inspirational, and inspirational, motivational. motivational. Yes, mm -hmm. a lot of it. Some of it, you know, a little bit more. In your face, you know, when I think about issues in our society. Political. Some things more like mm -hmm. the marginalized populations. I'm a social worker by profession. Oh, really? Poet by passion. Mm -hmm. And so often. I like that poet by passion. Yes, definitely. You gotta have some passion to do it. You got to. If you got a passion, maybe you're doing the wrong thing. Exactly. Yeah. And it is definitely a passion for me. So mm -hmm. in my world, I try to. I, I'm trying to blend the world together, my profession okay. and my passion. And so sometimes, that, of course, that will seep out in my poetry, the, the passion mm -hmm. of helping and, you know, justice. Things but like being that. a Sagittarius, y'all got some passion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, and, you and my sign, you, you, every yeah. time we talk, it's always, okay, what's your sign? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, <laughs> because, I mean, we got to catch up with y'all. Yeah. I like to be on the go. On the go. On oh, the all go. This. And know everybody. <laughs> Do we? Yes. Oh, everybody know me. Know everybody. Yeah, everybody know you. you know. Hey, girl, how are you? Hey, man. I'm like, who's this now? Who's that? Yeah. What's your name again? So, yeah. 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 So, let's get to the poetry because we're talking about poetry. So, anything you'd like to share? Okay, I can start off with a piece. This is, um, um, kind of speaks to my, mm -hmm. my relationship with poetry. Okay. I don't feel so well. Mm -hmm. My heart is heavy and my soul don't know that it indeed will be all right. Mm. There's a dagger of disappointment dangling from my right shoulder blade. Arms too fat to reach around and pull it out. Pain mm. too real to pretend it away. Mm. My eyes are bag holders filled with last night's tears. And my 
Cheeks are round rocks flowed upon by today's new tears. The pain of fear ballooned my ankles swollen from standing too long, toes too afraid to wiggle in the sand, and my stomach, it flips and turns, it flips and turns, it flips and turns like a riddle deprived breakdancer, and the room is spinning like records on a turntable manipulated by life. The DJ, woo, mm. give me a seat. No water or cold compress needed here, but just Give me a pen with a permeable surface and I'll write this pain away. I'll write the dagger right out of my back and with my pen I'll drain bags filled with wet hopes and soggy dreams. And from my ducks will flow poetry, poetry that liberates and sets the captives free, yes, even me. I'll elevate my legs on metaphors and monologues, redirecting subtle blood from my ankles into my legs, from my legs into my thighs, from my thighs into my buttocks, into my torso, into my neck, to my brain, back down again, into my arms, and into my fingers, my pin gripping fingers. Mm. Give me a pen, and mm. I'll write this pain away. Mm. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Color me poetry, part one. Color me the man that cried I am, and that would be my eternal flame. Color me poetry, for nobody knows my name. I am the middle passage in Athens. Uh, I am you, and you are me. We were the mask of America, something old, something new. Mm. For I am poetry. I am the living experience. I am the lifelong proof. Color me the poetry of nothing but the truth. Color me a love child lost in the promised land. Mm -hmm. I am a poem for black hearts going to meet the man. I am not to be mm -hmm. sold nor bought, so color me a scholar in the school of thought, for I am poetry. Color me the rose and the thorn, for I am the timeless hopes of dreams mm -hmm. yet unborn. I am for my people a portrait of pride. Color me the Negro who speaks of rivers deep down inside. For I am poetry. Let us lift every voice and sing a black and unknown boss of long ago. Color me a song in spite of myself that all the world might know. Color me poetry. Mm. For I am poetry. Excellent, excellent. You know, that's the namesake of, of the show. I see. Yeah. I love uh, the title of your show. It's awesome. Thank you. And uh, Yeah wrote that back in the 90s when I first started doing Color Me Poetry. Wow. Because I was asked, well, what are you going to call the show? You know? <laughs> and I didn't know what I was going to call it. And I'm just thinking to myself, I said, well, I got this new poem called Color Me Poetry. It's in two parts and a long, dramatic poem. So let's try that. Yeah. And that's how we got the show. It's a perfect title. Every time I hear it, I'm like, wow, it couldn't, it couldn't yes. be more perfect than that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that, but why did you write that piece you, you just wrote? That was, that was amazing. Thank you. The way you, you used the, the language. Thank you. You know, those metaphors. You know, I, um... And you play with the language too. I I, I love to. I mean, that's what poetry is all about. I you can manipulate the, the words. You can put a period yeah. or not. You know. I that's think right. one of the reasons why I began I, I began to really love poetry is because mm -hmm. I could break the rules. I could yes. break the rules. And so with that particular piece, what I didn't say earlier is that often, you know, mm -hmm. in writing as a poet, you mm -hmm. run out of pain, right? You write, mm -hmm. you run out of experiences. And for me, initially, it was just an assignment in school. But over time, things began to happen in life and I turned to poetry even more so as an outlet um, mm -hmm. for whatever I was feeling, whatever I was going through. And so when some people may drink, some people may get high, some people mm -hmm. do other things, um, and certainly my life could have gone those directions, but poetry mm -hmm. is what often and what still saves me mm -hmm. when I'm having those kind of rough times. And so that piece kind of speaks to, you know, I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way, but mm -hmm. um, you know, poetry is the hope that I that like I have. Like you said, you like to break the rules. Yeah. 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 Sagittarius always breaking the rules. <laughs> they make them so they can break them. <laughs> I, I, I like to break the rules in that in space. Way, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's interesting because I had a professor um, mm -hmm. when I was in. Well, I was. She was my mentor. I met her when I was like fourteen years old. And I would come. She, you know, take bring me to her house. I had all these poems and stuff, and she would help me with my poetry. I could never spell that well, mm -hmm. so she would. Um, uh, take her written, you know, back there during that time too, they had that red pencil. Yes. And she would teach me uh, at her knee, 
uh, with her red pencil, wow. or her favorite chair in the house. Wow. She would teach me at her knee. Wow. And uh, uh, she would always say queen. She's always called me queen. She's a queen. You can you can write you. He's a street poet. She said, so, but you damn sure can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, well, I'm going to teach you the rules of, of grammar. And, yeah, all. and yeah. she did. And okay. when I went on to, to college at Boise State University, you know, she, she was my mentor. She was, um, she, it was just wonderful the way she would um, teach me all wow. these things. And she said, first, queen, learn the rules. Yeah. And then learn how to break them. Then you can, that's your foundation, right? And I've been breaking them ever since. <laughs> but first, you got to learn them. Yeah, that's a good point. Because I've always been pretty decent at English classes. Mm -hmm. I never really had a major struggle in those classes. Mm -hmm. I could there was a natural ability to write and put things together. You know, there's some rules. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, goodness, I wouldn't always remember all the rules. Mm -hmm. But um, it was the foundation. So mm -hmm. from that point, when being introduced to poetry, um, you're right, I had a foundation. Mm -hmm. So I was able to manipulate what I knew and kind of mm -hmm. change it and make it my own. So mm, That's the beauty. Yeah. Now, also, let me ask you, since we talk about poetry, mm -hmm. how important is reading? Reading is fundamental, right? <laughs> I think so. If you're going to be a writer, you yeah, it's, 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 re it's very fun fundamental. Mm -hmm. I have to be very honest and transparent. Mm -hmm. I'm probably not as avid as a reader as I'd like to be, mm -hmm. and probably as I should be. And I'm very persnickety about what I do read, things that keep mm -hmm. my attention. Yes. The whole um, some things I, I, I'll start to read because I should read this. This is a good read, but I'm bored and I don't finish it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm often inspired to read other poetry, so I am mm -hmm. reading. or really? Right, I'm read? reading, and yeah. I love uh, life memoirs and life stories. Oh, I do too. I love reading people's life stories. Yeah. Right now I'm reading Aretha Franklin's life story. Oh, nice, yeah. nice, nice, yeah, nice. This is the second book. Of course, I've done... Um, I did two pieces on Aretha before she passed, mm. and then I did two more after she passed. Gotcha. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's and, good. that's uh, an excellent story mm -hmm. to be told, and yes, great and, and story. Yeah, I'm I sure. Mean, I always love the music, but I didn't know her life story. Yeah, we, we I think we only have bits and pieces, but that's good. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna have to check that book out. I um I read it's called um, respect. Respect, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense, right? Yes. Um, um, One of them. Becoming uh, Michelle Obama's uh, latest. Oh, yes. Which was, that was excellent. Uh, I enjoyed I, it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I had the audio book. Yeah, I, was, I did too. I did too. And it's, um, it's what, uh, 16 CDs, uh, 19 hours or something? Oh, okay. I don't know. Because when sure. I be driving, I just pop it in. Yeah. You know? It was enjoyable. And I, I definitely want to get the book, the hard copy as well, mm -hmm. because I like, I still like holding books. Yeah, I still like holding books. You know? And not, not, the only I like, not only do I like holding books, because it's, it's a different part of your mind. Yeah. But I like marketing my books. Yeah. And yeah. that comes from school, from college. Exactly. Marketing. Marking and colors, highlighting. You know, right. Highlighting all that. And <laughs> did making you do notes. The, did you do the color code of your highlights, like yes. questions, you know, okay. Yeah, I used to do that, well, that from college. That, yeah, I yeah. used to do that in college, in English class. And as I said, my professor in college, you know, she, she was such a great teacher. She was so down to earth. I had her for English lit. Mm -hmm. So I would um, I would sit in the back of the class mm -hmm. behind a petition because a little girl back there that I liked. It kind of cute, you know. <laughs> and she would say, Queen, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I said, Miss Smith, why are you picking on me? She said, no, you're an English major. You need to sit up front. Mm, and she would make me sit front. And she and, and she would say, um, you sit up front because you have to be the example. Because mm. you were the English major. I said, ma'am, but I ain't the only English major in here. She said, but you're the poet. Sit up here. Mm. <coughs> I don't want to hear no more. It's always somebody in our lives that will kind of see us. Yes. And then pull us out. I remember my English teacher in um, high school. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, and I stand and I, I stand before audiences and do things like this, but I'm mm -hmm. kind of a shy person. I'm really a shy really? person. Mm -hmm. And so at that time, high school, I was really like, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and my English teacher, um, she saw something in me and she, she, she was also the drama teacher and the creative writing teacher. So she, oh, she covered wow. three and she, and she oversaw the drama mm -hmm. club. Mm -hmm. So she had four major components in the school. Mm -hmm. I was in her English class and she mm -hmm. had me tutoring my classmates and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I was fine with that. But she, and she was doing a play that she had written. It was really um, the story of the Eastern Shore. I used to live in Salisbury, Maryland. Oh, you said, okay. And she wrote this play, which was a series of monologues strung together, which tells mm -hmm. the not so positive parts, you know, of the Eastern Shore with Harriet Tubman and things like that. Mm -hmm. And she wanted me to play Harriet Tubman. I had never done anything of that magnitude. And I was petrified and she insisted, mm -hmm. you know, they would call me D, come, come audition. And I was like, no, no, no. And this lady got my classmates, every time you see D, you, you tell her you need to come to the audition. Mm -hmm. This lady pestered me and pestered me and, and I went. 
and I got the part because she really didn't have anybody else in mind. And it was the launching of me being able to really be okay with standing on a stage. I was still, you know, scared. Wow. And this woman, really, whether she knows it or not, Miss Yateman, I'll never forget her name. I don't know where she Yateman. is, but mm. she, Irish lady, red, fiery red hair, freckles, mm. you know, she launched me into a place of doing what I'm doing now, you know, being mm. able to stand on the stage, compel the audience's attention. Mm -hmm. There's always a teacher, somebody in our lives that always. will see you always. and pull you out. So yes. there you go. Yes. You, we all I have mean, them. I mean, teachers have meant a lot to me because I've had teachers who, because sometimes, there are people, not just teachers, but sometimes there are people who can see things in you that you can't, you can't see, see in yourself. Yeah, and don't know. And yeah, that's the mark yeah, of, yeah, a, yeah. Of, of a great teacher, but a, a great human being. A lot of times. Yeah. A lot of times that's been the case for me. People have said, "Well, you can do this." I'm like, "I can." <laughs> yeah, you can. I can see it in you. <laughs> you can do it. You know that reminds me. If you mind, if you don't mind, no, read whatever you I want. have a piece called. Oh, um, it's a love letter to the village people. It's a newer piece, so forgive me if I stumble a little bit. It mm -hmm. was written for an audience of, of people who serve in the community to help mm -hmm. at-risk youth and family. Okay. But I think it's applicable, particularly to what we're talking about okay. now. Love letter to the village people. Mm -hmm. They say it takes a village to raise a child. But I say, what good is a village if it's not unified? One mm -hmm. can chase a thousand, two can birth a nation. A village is a we thing. An us thing, a let's join forces and kick some butt thing. Mm. I write this letter to remind, encourage, and affirm. Dear village people, it's time to remind you of who you are. Like a star, you are light, a night repellent, darkness chaser, illuminators, arms, intertwined like aged vines climbing up the sides of buildings, binding barrios like Spider-Man binds the bad guys. And unlike all the king's horses and all the king's men, you put families back together again, mm. dear village people. Your palms are open wide like a heart dipped in love for the first time. You are a collection of collectors, gathering lost souls like protectors, snatching prodigal sons and daughters from their pig pens, bringing them back home again so that they can dream again, bringing them back home so that your stories they can pin. Mm -hmm. Dear village people, please do not ascribe to the solo superhero syndrome, flapping your cape in a spotlight of one, sporting S's on your chest like you the only one, mm -hmm. but instead let's sew our capes together, creating a love field, force field, absent of competition, but filled with conversations of solutions. Dear village people, mm -hmm. you are the community keepers, mm -hmm. the servant leaders, the answers to prayers. You are what happens when the system decides and dares to color outside the lines. Mm -hmm. You're the crazy mm -hmm. that chases the one and leaves behind the 99. They say it takes a village to raise a child. And I say, what good is a village if it's not unified? One can chase a thousand, two can birth a nation. Village, it's a we thing, it's a us thing, it's a you and me thing. I wrote this letter to remind, encourage, and affirm, signed, the product of the village. Mm. Wow, that's so beautiful, sister. Mm. Thank you. Wow. Do it for the children. Mm. Do it for the children. And the love of every man, woman, boy, and girl. You can find the key to the heart of the world. Do it for the children. For each and every one, got to find a better way to do what some say just can't be done. Do it for the children. Mm. Do it for the children and all that you do and say, do it for the children. A lifetime of love got to be a better way. Do it for the children. Mm. Teach the children the truth. The innocence of a child is a seed of truth for all to see. Mm -hmm. Teach the children the truth. They're the fruit of the family tree. There's so much that the world needs that they're just too little love. But all we really got to do is give a little more love. Mm -hmm. Do it for the children and all that you do and say. Do it for the children. A lifetime of love got to be a better way. Mm -hmm. Do it for the children. Teach the children the truth. Do it for the children. Yeah. Love mm -hmm. it. Wow. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. definitely as a social worker and as a mm -hmm. helper, um, some of my life's work has been with 
young people, mm-hmm. uh, at-risk youth, or, wow. or, or or maybe not so at-risk, but still need love, it doesn't matter. Um, okay. So I get- all got him the same way. And got him the same way, and so that really speaks to me personally as a, mm-hmm. you know, to, if, if nothing else, know your why, know the reason mm-hmm. why you're doing whatever you're doing, and sometimes, mm-hmm. You got to go to the very core, and if it's for the children, let it be. So, I mean, th- you, that's you. You still do that as as a profession? Um, I have shifted, so I am uh, not working in that capacity at this mm-hmm. time. I, I do some case management work with uh, another vulnerable population, which are seniors and elderly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am a poet full time. I'm an entrepreneur. Wow. Um, I am the owner of Kyan Ink Healing in the Pen. Kyan, Tell us about it. Sure, sure. I would love to. My pleasure. So Kyan Ink was birthed out I of... I love that name. Thank Kyan Ink. Yes. Ooh, girl, you're hot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. So Kyan Ink was, is, was birthed out of, um, you know what, ultimately pain. And I'll say it that way because um, I, I, I mentioned earlier, you know, I began to write more intensely when I experienced some things in my life. I experienced a lot of loss. My mother passed when I was very young. My brother, one of my brothers was moved out of our home and I don't have anywhere with all to, to know where he is or have contact with him. So very early in the game, and my fa- I wasn't raised with my father in the home at all, I had a lot of loss. And when my mother passed, it really, you know, it was crazy, man, and I really, was going in a different pathway, but like I said, poetry saved my life. Mm. So I'm fast forwarding a little bit because a lot of things happened and I, I began to write and kind of share, mm-hmm. journal, all those good things. And I would keep those things to myself. I would just write in my journal. It was just for me to, for me to be able to be it's free. Healing. It was healing for me. Yeah. And then at some point as I got a little older, I began to share, you know, hey, look at this poem this I wrote. Yeah. And people were saying to me, wow, that that really, you know, blessed me or that really helped me or I feel the same way or wow, you have a gift. So I began to share just kind of stepping out on the water and I found that people were appreciative because they too could hear and understand and were being free and healed themselves. So it became a call of sorts if not to keep what I have to myself. It was now that now at this point it becomes selfish and irresponsible so I began to share and Kyan Inc was the whole point of Kyan Inc is to create a platform for hope, healing and social change through poetry and uh through writing and through uh, community events and that kind of nature, that nature. Poetry is at the core of it. Writing mm-hmm. is at the core of it, and healing is at the core of it. Yes. So, Kyanig is really dedicated to, you know, spreading love and healing and inspiration, and also mm-hmm. change, social change As through well. through, through mm-hmm. this venue. So, mm-hmm. I'm the owner of that, and we recently launched a, a product line called Tangible Things, and you oh. see there in front of you a T-shirt and a mug. I had a few oh, things yeah. to, to bring. Mug. Yeah. So, reach, stretch, seize. <laughs> Close up of that. Make dreams tangible things. This is the idea behind Tangible Things product mm-hmm. line. Wow. It is, this is, first of all, tangible things, is the concept behind that is to really make dreams materialize. Mm-hmm. They're tangible. And wow. um, I've always had this Love thought that. and idea to have products that had what I call standalone pieces of my poetry. Mm-hmm powerful little standalone lines. Every poem has a stanza or a line that you yeah. can pull out and it can stand That's by right, itself. Yeah. So I call them standalones. Mm-hmm. It's my dream and vision, uh, one of them anyway, to have product line that would have standalone oh, powerful wow. pieces on it to be inspirational. Um, so you get up and in the market morning- market that. And market it that way, yeah. That's so that's right. one of our that's one of our things, our latest launchings at Kine. That's why I I've been doing these broadside points for, for a lot of years because mm. it's a way to market. It's a way to market my poetry. Ah. The culture, the books. These are broadsides. I the gotcha. Books, I have posters as well. I mean, you know, some people do t-shirts. Yeah, no, that's uh, awesome. But but uh, it's it's a it's a way to get my work out quickly. It is. Cause I could um I could write a poem today and have this on the street by this evening. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we we when I first started kind of was one of the things we did was we did some of our work was. Mm-hmm. Oh, we call them wall, wall ornaments, and we would laminate them, mm-hmm. like you said, the, the, the smaller yeah. size. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's awesome. Wow, that's the beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. So there's a piece I'd like to share. Sure. It's not a piece that I wrote, but it's a piece that I love. Mm. Uh, but it's simply entitled Good Thoughts, Bad Thoughts, and it's by George Clinton mm. and James Allen. Okay. I don't know if you know who George Clinton is. I'm not familiar. Yeah, there's a group um, years ago called Parliament Funk and Delic. Ah, okay. And uh, somebody okay. in the studio know all about it. Cause he used to be a drummer with <laughs> my engineer Tony used to be a, a drummer with with uh, ah, okay. Parliament Funk and Delic. Yeah. Okay. And um, 
So this is a piece that, that George Clinton wrote. Good thoughts, bad thoughts. Travel like a king, listen to the inner voice. A hidden wisdom is at work for you. Conquering the stumbling blocks come easier when the conqueror is in tune with the infinite. Mm. Um, is mm. in tune with the infinite. Every ending is a new beginning. Life is an endless unfoldment. Change your mind and you change your relation to time. You can find the answer. The solution lies within the problem. The answer is in every question. An attitude is all you need to rise and walk away. Inspire yourself. Your life is yours. It fits you like your skin. Mm. The oak sleeps in the acorn. The giant quirtus um, sleeps in his tiny seed. The, bay, the bird waits in the egg. God waits for his unformed in the man. You gravitate to that which you secretly love most. You meet in life the exact reproduction mm. of your own thoughts. There is no chance, coincidence, or accident in a world ruled by law and divine order. You rise as high as your dominant aspiration. You descend mm. to the level of your lowest concept of yourself. The infinite intelligence within you knows the answer. Its nature is to respond to your thoughts. Be careful of the thought seeds you plant in the garden of your mind. For seeds grow after their kind. Yeah. Every thought felt as true or allowed to be accepted as true by your conscious mind take root in your subconscious and and um, take root in your subconscious. Blossom sooner or later to an act and bears its own fruit. Mm. Good thoughts bring forth good good um, good. Oh, I'm sorry. Good thoughts bring forth good fruit. Bad thoughts will rot your flesh. Think mm. right and you can fly. The kingdom of heaven is within. Good thoughts, bad thoughts. Nice. Mm. I, I love that. It's just it, it's it's so simple but powerful because mm -hmm. the seeds that we plant, right? And, yes. And I um, have a, um, a a curriculum that I'm working on, mm -hmm. and particularly for young young girls, but it can be modified to different populations. Mm -hmm. And one of the se se uh, sections in that curriculum speaks to what I call internal conversations, called conversations, but okay. specifically talking about the internal conversations. Mm -hmm. Now we all know that sometimes in our lives people may say things to us that may be good, like my teacher saying you can, do, you can, you can mm -hmm. be this person or someone else saying <coughs> something different and mm -hmm. they can all be seeds. But we, and so it can come externally. But sometimes internally we mm -hmm. are either you know, fertilizing the seeds that came externally, yes. or we're planting our own. You know, yes. seeds and, always growing. Yeah, and they're growing. So that yeah. that speaks to something that mm -hmm. um, I can I can get with, and it reminds me of a piece that I wrote recently, maybe in the last six months or so. Come on with it. Uh, it's called. Uh, Come on with it. Dear you. Oh, okay, I thought it was called Come On With It. No. <laughs> I'm going to rename it. Hold on, let me put it on my paper. I'm going to rename it right quick. Come on with it. Dear you, I like writing letters, right? This is another letter kind of thing. But anyway, dear you, you have no idea how strong you are. Mm. Your spine is made of flexi steel, agile, shock absorbing, never broken. I have never spoken of this strength before, not because it doesn't exist, but because you have always closed the door to this belief. Your reality laden with grief. Oh, blinded by the insanity that your humanity was vanity. Life served you up on styrofoam plates and plastic cutlery warmed over leftovers. Imaginary, China seemed imaginary. But what good is a fancy bowl if the contents is old? Mm. Little do you know how strong you are, how bold and unlikely to fold you are. While others drop and break like those china plates, you mm -hmm. bend and lean. And if at first you don't succeed, you try, try, try again, stand up again and hope again. Your strength is strong like God's light on a Sunday morning. Incredibly, you keep rising like God's light on a Sunday morning. You have no idea how strong you are. Your legs are made of titanium, bionic like an alien, corrosion resistant, fully competent to stand, even when you don't understand. Don't you get it? I am your biggest fan. Not in an infatuated kind of way, but in an everything I made was good kind of way. See, it pains me every time you question your tenacity. The audacity of your doubt re nails me to a cross of limitation. When will you walk out the liberation that I bled out for you in my crucifixion? When will you wear the victory that I gave you in my resurrection? When will you learn that I'm a mathematician? Your weakness plus my strength equals perfection. Stop saying you can't do the math because I'm the, the teacher, the tutor, and the equation. All you need, you have, if you would just 
grasp. Stop bowing in obedience to social media's meritocracy, but better yet, bow your knee at Calvary. Has anyone ever told you how strong you are? Mm. That your spirit is irrepressible and your wins are non-refundable? Mm. Has anyone ever told you that your heart is made of unbreakable feathers and though it weathers nearly unbearable measures, it keeps pumping and thumping and beating the charges held against it? Mm. So I know what I'm saying is true. Because, baby, I made you. I made you with the imported metal from the invisible kettle that the Big Dipper rested in. Mm. I made you with the periodic table's finest, mm. creating elements just for you, defying gravity and nature, too. So when I tell you that your strength is strong, please don't dismiss me and tell me I'm wrong, but rather stand up mm. in this truth and mm. say it with me. I am strong. Mm. I am strong. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a seed that needs to be planted for me on a daily basis, mm -hmm. that I am strong. We are strong. So I thought about that listening to wow. you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oof. Goodness, sis, you're blessing us up in here today. <laughs> mm. Born to be blessed. On mm -hmm. the wings of faith from heaven on high, you need to know that you can make it if you try. Though life will always put mm -hmm. faith to the test. Through it all, you got to know you're born to be blessed. Yeah. But success is not yours to have in the first degree without challenge, setbacks, and lifelong adversity. Mm -hmm. The day you were given breath of life is the day you were blessed with a divine birthright. When in your heart you know you're born to win, you can never lose a sense of who you are within. Mm -hmm. The reality of a dream come true is based on faith, focus, and follow through. So you need to know you're born from the seed of success is to know within your soul mm. you're born to be blessed. Mm. For on the wings of faith from heaven on high, you need to know that you can make it if you try. Mm. Born to be blessed. Yeah. You have to believe that. Yeah. In terms of faith. Yeah, you, know, you do. You got you got to believe that you, that you're here for a special reason. Yeah. 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 There's a piece I did for kids called Because I'm Special. Ah. That's what it talks about. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's a good message. We, mm -hmm. there's so much other stuff going on out here, and it's other messages being, being you know, harrowed all through our ears and through our person. So we mm -hmm. need to hear the truth mm -hmm. that we are special. That uh, we're somebody strong. text me saying more poetry, more poetry. <laughs> 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 we gotta hear that. Somebody, more poetry, more poetry. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I wanted to um, share. I'm really excited. There's so many different things going on in my life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, don't forget the book. We got. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's yeah. what I'm gonna get there. Okay. Cause so many different things going on that um, I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. One of them is I am a part of a, a, a group, a, 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 I call it a poetry ensemble, mm -hmm. um, where, and I know you know this person, Diane Parks, um, course, another good friend. Good friend. Di, Diane used to be on with us back in the day. I boy. know, she's, yeah. she's, she's one of the people she's who speak, a baby <laughs> <laughs> that speaks so highly of you and, and, mm -hmm. and told me about you as well. Mm -hmm. So she had this vision, you know, to say, I want to, to, to create this group of diverse poets in the DMV mm -hmm. area with, you know, diversity as it pertains to ethnicity, yeah. as well as diverse voices and how, mm -hmm. we, how we do what we do in this thing called poetry. So it's called The Right Blend, W-R-I-T-E, The Right mm -hmm. Blend, right blend. Um, uh, The wow. Right Blend Poetry Circle. And mm -hmm. we are so excited Perfect. because we are about to launch a collection from all of us with all of our work in it oh, called okay. it's called the right blend um okay. uh as well and i i, I at first i was kind of leery when she asked me i was like, kind of no i got a lot of things in my plate i don't know and I, I just met diane too i wasn't really as um mm -hmm. she's such a lovely person yeah. and so i'm glad that i'm a part of it because it not only has caused me to be a part of a great group mm -hmm. but also stretches me to write you know more or to write differently um because you have again just a diverse group yeah. um, in that group. So I'm excited about that. I want to put that out there because I, I'm hoping before the end of the year, probably by the end of November, our book will be ready and do some mm -hmm. pre-sales. And so um, I want to, so the book is, uh, the poems, you got Billy in there, Billy Okura, mm -hmm. um, Hiram, I think you will be having him on later oh, on Billy's in the month. Part of it. Okay. Yeah, Billy is a part of it. So you got a very strong, uh, diverse crowd. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to share a piece that I put into that collection mm -hmm. because, well, it's, it's kind of controversial to okay. me. That's all right. Come to on me. with it. All right, let me find it. Let me find it. I thought I had labeled it. Oh, okay. Love, peace, and poetry. That's what we do here. Love, peace, and poetry. I love that too. That's another good name. You just you just drop the names like <laughs> water just coming out, right? So this is called "There Is Blood on the Cotton." Oh wow! Ooh, I love that. 
Come on, girl. I love that title. Ooh, come on. So, um, and I, I you know, kind of like to hear your thoughts on it, what you hear. Snowy white and neatly folded, rows of teas stand at attention in the dresser. Each one whispering, pick me, as eyes scan the open drawer, textile perfection, almost. Until the nick on his chin drips, now there is blood on the cotton. And like that, the fabric of our lives is the fiber of his anguish. Hmm. Rows of cloud-like purity stained with the blood of human chattel. King cotton ruled like a, with a leather whip. Hmm. The economic backbone broke down many black bones, making bank bones, hmm. but only for the bones covered in hmm. white skin. Hmm. Men, women, and children bow in reverence to a hot sun and a cold king. Racing against daylight and, ign and ignoring the screams of their worn bodies. Backs bent, hands pick, fingers pricked, blood drips. There is blood on the cotton. Mm. Camera flash forward. Snowy white tee still stand at attention. Perfection lost with one single drop. A sure castaway. With ancestral courage, his shaky mulatto hands reached in the opened drawer and rescued himself under Ralph, Gavinci, and Armani, a subtle reminder that there is blood on the cotton. Mm. Ooh, wow. Yeah. I love that title. Mm. Thank you. And Let me say that to those who may be just tuning in, you, uh, you're in tune to Color Me Poetry, I'm host poet Danny Queen, and my lovely guest is yes. none other than Miss Cayenne, and Kayan. she's hot as can be. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> you think Cayenne Pepper hat? Hot? Woo, boy. It's hot up in here. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get a fan. Woo. I'd like to share this piece here. Uh, this is a piece that I wrote because... It's, it's something that's been in our community and it's interested with it that it comes from, and it comes from slavery, it comes mm, from oppression. Mm, yeah. And this piece is simply entitled Chocolate Rainbow, and the subtitle is Color Struck. Mm. <laughs> Chocolate Rainbow, black, white, brown, red, yellow, tan, all shades of the rainbow come from the original man. The missing link to what we as a people lack is loving who we are in all shades of black. Mocha, sepia, sable, red bone, cinnamon, mahogany, pearl. Children of the sun living in a color-struck world. Mm. Whatever shade of ebony to ivory you might be, black is black, I am you and you and me. And you are me. You can't possess the soul essence of somebody else. So to love and know who you are is to be yourself. Beyond our shock of the sick color struck shame, as a people, we are all colored one and the same. Mm. Uh, the, only, the one draft rule will always undervalue and demean the wannabes, the jigaboos, and every shade in between. Black on black love is so power validation, despite our brown bag, blue veined indoctrination. Mm. Interrace, prejudice, preference, and mm. pride are reflections of the past that cannot be, de be denied. As a human rainbow with the wind at our back, the power of black self-respect comes in all shades of black. Honey brown, peanut butter, vanilla chocolate, copper tone, uh, mocha maple, nocturnal rose, raven brick house brownstone. Whatever shade of ebony to ivory you might be, black is black, I am you and you are me. From ruby, round, from, from ruby red brown to a black walnut pecan, a uh, lemon uh, strawberry peach to a beach sand color tan. Mm -hmm. The missing link to what we as a people lack is loving who we are in all shades of black. Mm. Chocolate rainbow. Yeah, chocolate rainbow. I mm. love the, the 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 different descriptions of shades. Because <laughs> we got it all. We got it all. It's yes. Now speaking of that, you truly, you truly, you have, tell me about you, your heritage. I. You truly African American. Yes. yes. That's so funny when you tell said us that. why. I, I am, my father is Ghanaian. Um, mm -hmm. my, my paternal side of my family is from Ghana, West oh, Africa. Wow. And my mother um, mm. is uh, an African American or a black mm -hmm. black woman, was a black woman. Mm -hmm. And so that was funny because I, whenever, when I, when I got to a place where I was confident and comfortable mm -hmm. in my skin and knowing yes. that, because I didn't always start there, I didn't start there, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Then I would say I'm a true African. I'm a true African American. Well, you are. Black on black, right? More black, blackly, blackly, black. <laughs> so I have I have definitely become to walk in the in the pride of, of knowing yes, that you know and understanding yeah. that. And so that's it's a blessing to 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 know that and to mm -hmm. be able to be comfortable in my skin. Yes, you got to be comfortable in who you and who, who you, you are. are. Yeah. yeah, walk in who you are and don't lie to yourself. Right. 
flaws See, that's the and all, you know? When we lie to ourselves. Yeah. I got a point called stop lying. <laughs> and you got to start with yourself because sometimes we lie to ourselves. But a lot of times we lie to ourselves because of our conditions in this country. Yeah. We're taught to lie to, us, to yeah. ourselves. And therefore we end up lying to everybody else. Yeah. Because if you lie to yourself, you lie to everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a time to really, you know, look truth in the face. And sometimes yes. truth is hard and hurtful, but if we can look it in the face and begin to see and reframe and reframe what we have allowed mm -hmm. to be negative. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I remember a time not being very happy about being dark. It was a very mm -hmm. negative thing where I, where, I was, where I was at that time. I was like different, no one liked me. I was this, I was that. And so it was hard to really mm -hmm. accept and be comfortable in my skin. Um, so sometimes even our differences what, or what others have claimed to be negative mm -hmm. is really our power, it's our superpower. Yes, now when growing up, did you find that? Was that, uh, I guess as a young person, you know, but sometimes even as old as, as old people. Oh yeah, the the whole thing of mm -hmm. of of color and uh, mm -hmm. dark light. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, like you said, a lot of we have a lot of history as African Americans that mm -hmm. that have been passed down from generation to generation in our DNA. I, I mm -hmm. believe that from trauma to just misconceptions mm -hmm. and generationally, like my grandmother, my m maternal grandmother. Mm -hmm primarily raised me. And so that that generation, yes. she was she grew up in a different generation, some segregation yes. mm -hmm. and right. keep it low, you know, do the right do the right thing and mm -hmm. let's just keep stay no trouble. So mm -hmm. being raised by a woman who came from a different generation, even though we were in a different age, yes. there were some nuances, things like, okay, your nose is getting too broad. Which where did mm -hmm. that come from? And we don't wear red. Uh, yeah, no, don't wear red. You no, know, don't wear red lipstick. You know, your yeah. nose is too broad, or you know, and, either, and as and over time, I'm like, I begin to, you know, you don't, you don't yeah. feel comfortable in being yeah. black. Black people have broad noses. We have, we have we curly come hair. Of, we come, you know, we come in all kinds of shapes, and so mm -hmm. that took a minute to kind of come out of that and, and grow mm -hmm. into a, another place. Mm. So, wow, that's beautiful that you would say that, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you something sweet right now. Okay. Something real sweet. What you got? Chocolate City Candy. Oh, okay. Just the taste of you makes my life so complete. Learning to love you is a special treat. The little loving things you do forever makes your honey sweet. You're good and plenty loving. Just knocks me off my feet. You're my sugar baby, peppermint <laughs> patty pearl. My m and plain Chocolate City Candy Girl. My <laughs> lifetime lightsaber, Fifth Avenue, Lover's Lane Park. My buttered finger, whatchamacallit. Set sweetness in the dark. Now and later, you'll always be my Mary Jane, my baby Ruth. My mouth's bomb and joy. Chocolate's <laughs> on the sweet too. Let me be your payday, sugar daddy galore. Your 100 grand, Mr. Goodbye for sure. Mm. And when you turn on your total tipsy road charts, your chocolate cherry kisses make me melt in your arms. Mm. You're my sugar baby, peppermint patty pearl, my Eminem plain, chocolate city. Mm -hmm. Candy. <laughs> oh, that's so trying to make us trying to make a sister feel sweet up in here. Uh, <laughs> I'm a candy rapper, girl. You a candy rapper? <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. Candy rapper. Okay. No, definitely. That's 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 nice. I like. I, I love the way you just you know you you continue to keep the metaphor going and the concepts going. That's. Funny. I wrote this for a dear friend of mine. Too. Oh yeah. Yeah, who married somebody else. I was going to say, what happened? She married somebody else. That's what happened. <laughs> All that candy wrap. Yeah, she was like, I don't want no cavities, bro. I want some, <laughs> some veggies. <laughs> now, I wrote it for a friend of mine some years ago whose name was Candace, and uh -huh. um, she was always asking me to write something for her birthday. Oh, okay. And so I went into the store and started writing down all these candy balls. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, maybe I can do something unique. And this is what I came with. Yeah. Chocolate City Candy. I love it. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's, it also makes me think of, I'm getting kind of specific, mm -hmm. like, if a, a Washingtonian writing to a girl from D.C. because Chocolate City reminds me of the concept. Well, of yeah, that. I was thinking of that too. It was yeah. around that time, really. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 it was around that time. And then after I wrote the poem, I remember seeing Ebony, Ebony, Ebony Magsley, um, Jack. Mm. You, you remember Jack? Yeah, yeah. You're old enough to know Jack. I right? do. I am old so enough to know Jack. So after I wrote the poem, like a couple of months after I wrote the poem, I remember seeing the center phone because you know, brother, we used to always see yes, the center phone. Yeah, yeah. And there was a sister, and the, the heading on the top, her, you know, the, her picture was Chocolate City Candy. I said, oh, Lord. That wow. Was funny. And that was, that's like confirmation. Yeah. I said, wow, that was really interesting. This wow. is like a couple months after I actually wrote the poem. I was like, wow. And this is an old poem. This wow. poem goes back a oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, uh, close to 20 years. Yeah, it really does. Never thought about You should have submitted it to the, submitted it to Jeff, man. All right, more poetry, more poetry, <laughs> this thing. And it's X. Okay, so 
listen, this is a book, it's a chat book called Syncopated Hearts. Syncopated Hearts. Syncopated Hearts. Where do you get that title and why? Um, there's a, there's a, the, the signature or the title poem mm -hmm. in this is called Syncopated Hearts and it was written, um, uh, I believe, again, poetry often is about mm -hmm. the passion. Yes. Let me see here. Syncopated Hearts was written as a piece where I talk about jazz. Can you read it? I can. Let Please. me let me find it. Come let on me. with it, as I say. You know, renamed all my poems to call them. Come on with it. <laughs> Come on with it. One, two, three. Come on with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we That's go. That's interesting because I have friends who write poems and they they just call it. They don't give it a name. They just call it untitled. I have I have plenty of untitled. Really? I have plenty of now, untitled. Now, do you number them when you do the untitled? Because I told him, I said, I said, well, you're going to have it untitled. <laughs> Give it a number. So, untitled 1, Untitled 22, something, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I never thought about that. Yeah. I haven't. This is called Syncopated Hearts. The cadence of my heart spills out into the street, skipping, leaping, and dancing, revealing the secrets of my fearful soul while dreaming out loud in rhythmic rainbows of happiness. My beat is unique, my beat different, and my beat feels isolating. Yet forced to yield to the syncopation of the heart beating an ocean away from me, I found that they were really standing right next to me, and my staccato solo turned synergistic. Mm. My lonely beat is never alone. It really was a, a time where I think I was thinking mm. about loneliness and kind of being alone, but you find right. that you're not really alone, that okay. our heartbeats yeah, are... Are are uh, setting apart. That's you know him. That's Doc Powell. Oh, that's Doc's hand. Yes, oh, I've seen him hand somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's Doc Powell. We did a photo shoot together, and wow. um, I love that cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. Syncopated hearts. And so this is a wow. hodgepodge of poems, a small collection, and we're looking to re to to republish it um, mm -hmm. from uh, more of a hard copy from the from the soft chapel oh, wow. version. But this is just a small collection mm -hmm. of poems in it. The the the, the sections mm -hmm. include. Um, grieving Grandma, that's the first section. Oh. Uh, my grandmother passed, and there's some poems that I wrote in, in, in that section. There's um, faith philosophy, faith philosophy, faith philosophy. I made up a word, faith philosophy. Some okay. poems about my faith or about faith mm -hmm. in general. There's called Southside, which is my some of my experiences, um, which I think you really would like that South too. Side. South Side. Was Chicago? Like, no, not oh. South Side. <laughs> Chicago Southeast is really was, oh yeah, Southeast yeah I call it the South Side but I'm, I'm well you know when you said South Side you maybe you Chicago me, yeah I know well you also remind me of, of uh, Michelle Obama's book yeah 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 she talks a lot she about, about growing up on yeah, the South, South Side. Side yeah yeah mm -hmm. that particular chapter is one of, or that section of the book mm -hmm. is one of my favorites because it's more of the raw you know un, okay. unbridled uh, poems and it really just comes out of I live in Southeast DC I mm -hmm. live in Ward Eight. Okay. On the outskirts, like right, I can walk into Maryland. So if you know anything about South, I live more than nine. That's oh right, you, there you go, there you go. So that's oh, the I'm, I'm in the heart of that, and so and and moving over there. I'm not from DC. I'm not from the area. I didn't really know. I was trying. I needed a place to stay. And I moved there, and I got a dog. Eventually, I began to walk around the community, and I mm -hmm. I have a lot of interesting experiences just walking really? and seeing what I see. Mm -hmm. So some of those pieces were based out of the, my experience just being in the city, being mm -hmm. in the southeast side. Um, and then I have another section called Whimsy. It's just it's just whimsy. really poems. I got a poem about going falling asleep on the couch. It's just whimsical things. So the poem mm -hmm. is a nice, the book rather is a nice eclectic uh, version mm -hmm. of just some pieces that I've, I've wow. written. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, share one of the pieces. Sure, then. sure. Listen, Come on with it. this is. I'm trying to think. Which one should I do? Okay, well, this kind of speaks to my heart as a as a as a social worker as well. Okay. And this was actually written in homage to Michael Brown. Oh, wow. but so I've kind of my in, in my community where mm. I live. So a lot of that's kind of all blended up in this poem. It's called "Grass Don't Grow in the Ghetto." Mm. Glass glistens where grass is supposed to grow. Gruesome grooves pierce the ground, jutting upward like a black fist punching stale air. Mm. Sharp petal flowers memorialize dreams, wishes, and whispers of hope. Mm. But for the life of me, I can't figure out why grass don't grow in the ghetto. Gaping gashes sets his face aglow in the aftermath of a grappling with the popo. Gory glimpses of his faded glory is merely a glimmer in his flittering eyes. Groping for the remnants of his vitality, his fingers, his it slips through his fingers. His mother curses the fingers that pulled the trigger. They shot my son. 
mowed down like blades of green grass growing towards a blaring sun. My son! His spirit pierces white clouds thrust upward like a black fist punching stale air. Still can't figure out why grass don't grow in the ghetto. His homies pour libations. One sip for you, ten gulps for me. Believing that the blood-stained tree roots next to the white chalk silhouette and the yellow tape would somehow serve as his esophagus, delivering liquid resurrection power. But before he could rise from the dead, his homies would wash away urban poetry with hawk spits and hot piss, leaving nothing behind but shattered liquor bottles and the stench of dreams deferred. Still wondering why grass don't grow in the ghetto? Mm. Our sprinkler system spews putrid defeat we fertilize our seed with maggot-filled cow chips and avaricious dung, a.k.a. some real stinky shit. We eat our young and throw up our old, killing our future while immortalizing our past. We excuse hate when the hater is the hunter and a little black boy is the bait. Grass can't grow in the ghetto as long as the grass stays greener on the other side. As long as the economical and educational and medical divides are still wider than the space between my eyes, glass will continue to glisten where grass is supposed to grow. Until our so-called social services becomes true human services. Until our equality is no longer a no-go, but something that we do know going forward. Until our narcissistic greed ceases to be the latter. And the lives of little black boys and little black girls, they really do matter. But in the meantime, We'll politic and pontificate and perseverate the problems that mm. plague the brown people, mm. acting like we just can't figure out why grass don't grow in the ghetto. Yeah. Mm. Wow, sister. You are magnificent. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, have you done any recordings? I have, and I meant to bring that today. It's out of, it's out of you know, it's publication. Out of print. Yeah, out of print. Mm. Um, but I did a, a collection called Mm -hmm. uh, poetries and Melodies, um, mm -hmm. uh, Permanent Impression, Poetries and Melodies. But for voice like yours, not only should you do voiceovers, but you should do more recordings. You I really want should. to, I really do. Yes, you should. I need some connections. I'll get uh, in you got thing. one. I'm going to give you some soon as we get off the air. Okay, great. Yes. I and do. So I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, uh, I think we have about five minutes. Okay. And so in that time, what would you say to young people? What would I say to young people? Yeah, who want to do what you do, who want to write. I would say to them, write. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds very simple, but I mean just that. Take your pen, take your pencil, take your phone, mm -hmm. take whatever that is mm -hmm. and write. Put it out there. Do not worry about your spelling and the grammar because that's a lot of times what holds people back, young people mm -hmm. particularly. Who, I couldn't spell it well. This yeah. stopped me from writing. Yeah. But, some, but I know I've worked with kids, I've taught mm -hmm. kids, and a lot of times they, they hate writing. They hate oh, writing. Really? They'd rather talk and rap, and, but they don't want to write it. So mm -hmm. I would say to a young person, write it. Even if you're spelling it out the best way you know how, even if it's text language, write it. And then connect with someone to help you um, polish it. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, you know, share it. Because it's, yes. it'll heal you and it'll heal others. As Maya Angela used to say, poetry is meant to be written aloud. You know? Yeah. It really is. Meant to be felt. So, yes. Heard. So I like to close with this piece Okay. Here. Uh, Color Me Poetry Part 2. Okay. I am the language of love and the key of life. I am the wave of words in times of sorrow and strife, for I am poetry. Color Me the Native Sons, the, Color Me the Native Son that can't be set apart uh, from the poetry of the soul that's straight from the heart. Color Me Poetry. I am fantasy, fiction, and fact. Color Me the Shadow and the Act, for I am poetry. Color Me High to Low and Low to High. Uh, I am the dark symphony of the unsung hero. Color me the undercurrent in America's mainstream. I am like a ripple on the pond in the all-American dream. Yet I too sing America. Color me Othello the more. I am the soul of black folk, the spook who sat by the door. Color me poetry. Hmm. I am for my people a portrait of pride. Color me the Negro who speaks the rivers deep down inside. Hmm. For I and poetry. Let us lift every voice and sing a black and unknown boss of long ago. Color me a song in spite of myself that all the world might know. Color me poetry, for mm. I am poetry. poetry. Sister, thank you for coming and sharing thank today. Thank you for having you me. Yes, definitely. It's been beautiful. Got so thank much more. So yeah, much. definitely. You have so much, so much to give, you know, and thank what you. you've given us today. I know there's a lot more to come 
um, the communal, which of what you've given us today. Thank you so much. You so much. We had a wonderful time. Yes. I'm Danny Queen. This is Color Me Poetry here on the Eat Life Media uh, Network. And we thank you for tuning in. And tell them next time, I'm Danny Queen simply saying love, peace, and poetry. Hey. I am, I can, and I will. Wonderful.